Hit him, baby. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth was a game I was skeptical about upon hearing for the first time. I was aware of the presence of the original game, but I hadn't played it until I got my hands on Rebirth, and for that reason, you're going to be hearing the viewpoint of someone playing The Binding of Isaac for the first time, a bit of a fresh perspective. There's been a lot of games on the market whose defining feature is procedural generation, and because of this, I didn't really give Isaac a second thought when I learned the majority of the game was completely randomized. However, Isaac is nothing like the various survival-based Minecraft clones littering Steam and Xbox Live, and I was quite wrong to dismiss it. The Binding of Isaac follows the story of a young boy named Isaac. The game begins as Isaac's mother tries to sacrifice him to God. Isaac then escapes into the basement, where he must traverse a labyrinth full of various enemies, eventually facing off against his mother. The opening cinematic does a good job explaining things, considering if you decide to dive right into the game, you would be wondering what the hell is going on. The first thing you'll probably notice is the game's art style. It just reeks of Edmund McMillan, the original creator. On one hand, it looks really cute and cartoony until you realize that there's literally shit everywhere. I think having a simple cartoony art style juxtaposed with a really grotesque theme does wonders in not only ensuring that any computer can play it, but also staying really unique. It's pretty bizarre. There's even an enemy called a butt licker in reference to human centipede. Yes, butt licker. There's seriously nothing I've played like this game, aside from Super Meat Boy, another of Edmund's creations. Rebirth is a throwback to old dungeon crawlers, structured similarly to the dungeons you would find in the original Legend of Zelda. While most people categorize The Binding of Isaac as part of the roguelike genre, it actually identifies stronger with a variation, the roguelite. Sounds dumb, but there are a lot of key differences. The classic roguelike game can be defined by three characteristics, permanent death, level randomization, and turn-based combat. Recently, there's been a revival of the genre with games like Spelunky and The Binding of Isaac. One aspect of Isaac different from the traditional roguelike game is that as you play, you're consistently unlocking new items and characters to use in-game. The difference between characters is pretty negligible, as the only real differences are starting items and stats, aside from Azazel, who is probably the most consistently strong character in the game. I say consistent because every last upgrade you find on a given run is completely random. The success of a run pretty much depends on getting good item synergy, as the later floors can be absolutely brutal, but in my experience, the game has been nothing but fair. I've gotten just as many, if not more, kick-ass runs than awesome ones, but like with most randomly generated games, your experience may vary, something my brother knows all too well. Dude, how's the run going? Dude! Each floor of the labyrinth is randomly generated as well, but you're always going to be finding shops, item rooms, secret rooms, and bosses among the hordes of enemies. Even though the bulk of the game is randomly generated, there's an odd sense of structure allowing you to make risky decisions instead of having everything decided by chance. It's refreshing. Isaac also does away with the turn-based combat in favor of a more action-oriented system, just like top-down Zelda. Isaac's weapon of choice is his tears, which can be fired repeatedly in four different directions. As I mentioned earlier, most items directly affect your stats and give real-time effects to your tiers, anything from rapid fire to all-out lasers. Combat can get pretty hectic quickly, and for that reason I recommend using a controller over a keyboard. There's just an amount of precision with a controller for Isaac that a keyboard can't offer in my opinion, and you're going to be dodging storms of bullets and enemies by the pixel, so in order to play to the best of your ability, you're going to need a controller. And that brings me to my final point. I know there's going to be some people tempted to purchase the original game over Rebirth because the original occasionally goes on sale for pocket change, and for that reason, I decided to do a brief comparison of the two. To start, Isaac OG does not have official controller support. If you're not into using third-party software to get your controller working, then Rebirth is your solution. Rebirth does have official controller support, so all you have to do is plug in your controller to get it working, and all the buttons are fully rebindable to your liking. Not only that, but Isaac OG has some odd performance issues as well. I don't know if the game is capable of reaching 60 FPS because it was made in Flash, but even if it is, it's far from being that smooth. I also had a lot of issues with the resolutions. Isaac OG goes up to 1280 by 720 but for some reason I've never been able to play it in full screen. It could take some tinkering in the config files, but once again, Rebirth has you covered with a buttery smooth 60 FPS and 1080p resolution. That's not even mentioning all the new content available exclusively in Rebirth, and at $15, there's really no reason to pick up the original. 
Rebirth improves on the original in every facet, offering tons of new content, great performance, and different ways to play. This game is really addicting. I often find myself lost in it for hours when I only mean to play one run or two because everything is just so satisfying from the enemy feedback to just how powerful you feel near the end. The replay value is through the roof, as you're always learning new things each run. Some people may recommend using the wiki guide in order to fully understand the game, but I think the true beauty of it is stumbling upon new items and secrets by yourself. It definitely has that one more run mentality that keeps me from playing all my other games, and for that reason I give it my glowing recommendation. It's also worth noting that Rebirth is probably the best remake of 2014, proving once again that AAAs have a lot to learn from their indie colleagues. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth is available on Steam, PlayStation 4, and Vita for $14.99. I really suggest you pick this up, because everybody deserves to have a really epic item combo.